safe and well. Today we're taking a closer look at the Oxford Rail 00 gauge N7 locomotive used on a lot of lines in the east of England. We'll be taking a closer look at the model featuring some of the detail differences and the history there as well. If you do have any questions at all on the N7, we are live, so please do put your questions in the chat and I will answer them there. So this is the 00 gauge N7 model. This was provided by Oxford Rail a couple of years ago now, and it's available in three distinct liveries currently. You've got the BR black livery with the early crest that we see there. And panning round, we have the Great Eastern Railway wartime grey, which the locomotives were originally delivered in. Now, these locomotives were actually designed and built during the First World War. Initially, they were built in 19, the first ones were built in 1915, should I say. And they were provided for the Great Eastern Railway, which ran suburban services out of London Liverpool Street up until the 1920s when it was taken over by the London North Eastern Railway. There was only 12 built initially, but the London North Eastern Railway liked the design, so built a lot more with variations and detail differences in them as well. They were used on suburban services, not only out of Liverpool Street, but also out of King's Cross after this date with the iconic quad art coaches that you may have seen on the rails out there as well. They were immediately a successful design. They did pack quite a lot of power for their size. I'll just pull the model up there for you again. Now you can see that it is quite a stout and plucky locomotive. And they really did pack a lot of punch with fast acceleration, making them absolutely perfect for suburban services where they needed to get out of the way of faster express trains heading along the line. The design was in use until the early 1960s, really popular and never, never superseded until the advent of diesels and electrics on the suburban services out of King's Cross and Liverpool Street. But there is one that still survives in preservation as well, number 69621. So you can still see these locomotives in service. And this was Oxford Rail's third steam locomotive they released, following on from the Dean Goods and the the um sorry, the Adams Radial as well that came out. And this follows on from the success of those designs. We're having the five pole motor in there just above the second and third driving wheels. That goes down into the drivetrain there. You've got all wheel pickup on there as well. Full NEM couplings. You do go around second radius curves. So if you have any tight point work or set track curves on your layouts, that's absolutely not an issue at all. I've already got a comment there from Ben Davis saying he likes the look of the locomotive in BR Black with the late crest. Now, that is a model that's due out of us later this year. That is with some of the depot embellishments provided by Stratford Depot as well. So click out, click that link in the description. Should you like more information on these three locomotives here or any of the locomotives that are coming through from Oxford Rail as well. And it is a really good point to take a focus on some of the liveries too. We can see here, we've got the BR Black there. I'll just make sure they spin around a little more for you. So we've got the fully lined BR Black, as you can see, and that's perfect for the modelers of the era four. So early to mid 1950s would look great with some of Hornby's, Thompson or Gresley Suburban coaches on a rake of four or five working out of Liverpool Street there. And I'll just bring it round for another time there. We've got the wartime black, sorry, the wartime grey livery on number 1002. This is the initial livery that the locomotives were released in. There's been a mention there in the chat as well regarding the Great Eastern Railway blue. Now, this livery that we can see on the screen is the initial livery for these locomotives. There were a couple that were painted in blue, I believe, but that was after the war rather than during the war when these locomotives were built. And it may be a livery that we see from Oxford Rail in the future. But this grey livery really lets you pick out some of the finer details on the model as well. 
you could just about make out the various piping on the front, including the condensing pipe for working through some of the inner London tunnels there as well. We've got Ben there saying he thinks this is a fantastic livery. I fully agree there, Ben, and I'll keep it on the screen for you just another minute so you can appreciate it as well. But if we bring it round to the front, you can see the full NEM couplings there as well. They have NEM couplings front and rear. They do have sprung buffers too, fully separately fitted smoke box details, including the clack valve on the top next to the funnel there as well. You'll also see a couple of different tooling variations that Oxford Rail have covered. You'll see the Belper firebox on this locomotive, more sort of the square shaped firebox. But if we bring it round to look at the BR Black model, I'll just bring that around a little quicker for you. You can see that that is the round top firebox as well. So Oxford Rail really has taken a lot of research into these different machines. So you can see the different variations that that has covered there as well. So Angus's trains there, really good comment. Favourite one is the line black with a red number plate. That again is one you can check out more information on the livery if you click that link in the description. And another comment there from Ben as well saying he's a fan of the wartime grey. So some really great opportunities not only to get the BR black, the wartime grey, but also the LNER black that we've we've not really looked at yet, but it is the gap in between the two. The locomotives did carry this livery for almost 25 years from 1923 up until the nationalisation in 1948. So whether you're a modeler of the pre-grouping right through until the early 1960s with the LNER in between, you have got an N7 that's suitable for you. Again, another question from Ben, did you end up in London Metropolitan Livery? Now, these particular locomotives didn't. They spent their lives owned by the three companies that we see here, the Great Eastern Railway, London North Eastern, and British Railways as well. The only livery that's not been covered, as mentioned in the chat earlier, is the GER Blue, which is fully lined and fully ornate as well, and that may be covered on a future model. Otherwise, the whole length and breadth of the history of the N7 with the different toolings and the different style boilers again there as well. As you can see on the screen now is covered by this model. So you've got the five pole motor in there. You've got full digital capacity as well. They do have an eight pin socket in there. Space for a DCC sound speaker and some models are available pre-fitted with a sound decoder, which is a lock sound decoder and comes with authentic sounds recorded from the actual preserved locomotive as well. So I'll just spin that around for you so you can see a little bit more of the inner cab detail too. Norton Wood, how much is the LNER version for sale? They start at £96. All the information on prices and more details as well is available via that link in the description for buying these three models with or without digital sound or the forthcoming BR embellishment livery which we've had a few mentions of in the chat as well. As ever you get a really good instruction manual with this particular model, you get a potted history of the locomotives, some great guides on how to fit the detailing there as well how to service your locomotive should you need to, and a really handy section of hints and tips just in case you do have any issues. But you shouldn't really see any issues with these. The running on them is absolutely exquisite. That five pole motor and pick up on all eight wheels as well. You've got a fully die cast chassis. You have die cast tank and cab sides as well, which is quite rare but it really does help the adhesion on this model as well. It can haul a lot more than the real life locomotives could do. You could really challenge one of these if you wanted to haul a rake of 10 or 12 coaches and you shouldn't really see any problems with that at all. Just looking at some of the rear detail there as well, you can see the separately fitted lamp irons on the back. But one of the more unusual items on this, and it is a question we do get occasionally, is what are the two brackets either on the smoke box of the right hand locomotive there or on the back of the BR Black locomotive? Now, they are destination boards. It's something that 
we really don't see a lot on steam locomotives, certainly of this era, but it's really come in now with multiple units and modern trains, is actually the destination of the service. This was fantastic for London's commuters, with stations with more than 20 platforms in some cases. Finding which train you had to get home was quite a challenge, especially when they've all got a, an N7 on the front of them. Such how, That was how prolific they were on these services. Now, having that little board on the front with the destination really did help out as to giving people directions on where to go as well. So Oxford Rail have fully recreated that. I'll just bring around number 1002 so you can see those brackets on the smoke box door. Nice little unusual feature. You don't see it on too many locomotives, but it really does add to the model, as does the copper cap on this particular livery as well. So Liam's asked her, what motors in these? It is a five-pole motor in these. You've got a five-pole five motor with a flywheel as well. So again, really good for the operation, matching with that weight. And you have also asked how heavy they are as well. They come in at just over 140 grams each. So nice bit of weight, especially for this size of locomotive as well. And you did ask her regarding the flywheels, which we've just covered. You have got a brass flywheel on the two. Norton Wood there saying the locomotives were required to hold the 10 coach Quintart services. Now they were the articulated coaches, five, five sets, I believe, sets of five coaches. So there you go. For a little locomotive of this size, they were required to do some quite plucky duties as well. And there's a really good comment. I was waiting for someone to say this. Nathan's already clocked it. Now, they were known as the jazz trains as well in the 1920s. So Nathan there has brought that one up. Thanks for mentioning that, Nathan. And Liam there as well has said, in fact, a few of you have said, Angus has mentioned as well, what's my favourite colour? Now, the grey is the particular one for me. I think I'm a real fan of the grey livery because you don't see that many grey locomotives on sale, and especially incorporating that wartime era as well, where so many changes were happening on Britain's railways too. So it's really set out by the red connecting rods there and the number on the side as well. Angus is asked if they were painted in apple green. Now, I don't know for certain, to be honest. I'm pretty sure they weren't. I think they stuck in the BR and the LNER black liveries, but it's something I'll take a bit of a look at and I'll put a comment in the chat afterwards once that is absolutely confirmed for you there. So there's three models available now, as you can see. We've got the BR black, the Great Eastern, and the LNER livery as well. You do get a very small detailing bag, but that's not a negative. It just shows how many details are already pre-fitted to this model, but this is optional steam pipes on there. So if you want a locomotive that could provide steam heat to the train, some N7s were, some N7s weren't. So it is an optional extra, that one, but most of your normal details do come pre-fitted. You'll see there on the front, you've already got your brake pipes not only for vacuum, but you've also got Westinghouse air brakes on there as used on these services. You can just see on the side of 1002, on the left-hand side there, the Westinghouse brake pump as well, which is exquisitely detailed, and the various piping. And this is one thing that really shines for me on these locomotives, just the amount of pipe work that's on them as well, required for working through the London suburbs on vacuum or air brake trains. So you really do have a lot of differences and a lot of details there. Good morning, Kev. You've asked, will the sound work on an analog controller? You will be able to get the basic sound. So you'll have the steam locomotive chuff. And that's pretty much it, to be quite honest. For the full sounds, you do need a digital controller to unlock them. But they do come with the fully authentic bells, whistles, firebox sounds, etc. Everything you can imagine. But if you are running that on analog, you can get the fully authentic truffing and coasting sounds on there as well. Angus has asked whether they do come with those destination boards. We did mention earlier in the stream, they do not, but it is something that you'd pretty easily be able to knock up out of a piece of plastic card or similar, and the dimensions are available as well, should you want to have a look at those. So Liam's asked, do I recommend these? Now, 
Sure I do. It's it's why I chose these to show to you. They are an absolutely fantastic model in my mind, absolutely crammed full of details, and they've got a really great history to them as well. Not only the wartime model there showing that designs were still taking place and railway development during World War One, but over 40 years of history hauling suburban services in and out of London as well. One in preservation that you can see around and about in the world too. I believe it's at the East Anglian Railway Museum currently, which is rather appropriate. But just the amount of locomotives you can run these with as well. There's a, a growing availability of Great Eastern Railway models. There's the J15, the B12 and the B17 from Hornby. These would look absolutely fantastic with the Gresley and Thompson Suburban coaches that you can also get in double O gauge, whether that's in the LNER teak livery or the maroon and crimson liveries of BR days as well. You can really recreate some of those suburban services. But towards the end of the lives, the locomotives were displaced. So if you have a smaller branch line, especially in the east of England, and you do want one of these locomotives with one or two coaches, do take a look as well, because these late deliveries really do cover that, and possibly a small bit of freight as well. I'll just show you again, we've had a question regarding the destination boards. I'll just show you what you do get in the pack one more time. It is just a pipe of optional steam heat, pack of optional steam heat pipes. Everything else comes pre-fitted. That's all the details you see on the model here all come pre-provided. So these models that I've got on my stand for you, all I did with these was take them out of the box and put them on my stand. Everything you see does come pre-fitted. So Ben Davis asks there, do you think there'll be a model of the quad art set? Now, it is something that may come out in the future. It would be the ideal pairing for these locomotives, as they did run with them for quite a few years. As Ben's mentioned, there's a set of those preserved at the North Norfolk Railway, and it may be something we see in the future. And we are always open to ideas as well for our own commissions. So if you wanted to send any suggestions through to ideas at hattons.co.uk, you're more than welcome to. I'll just put them on for one last time. I'll give you a bit of a roundup as well. You can get these locomotives, as we see here, from any livery from the mid-1910s right up to the 1960s. One survives in preservation, so if you're a modern era modeler, you can get one of these locomotives on your layout too. They come in starting at £96. All the information is on the link in the description as well. So check out that for more information you've got a fantastic model when it comes to running here you've got a huge amount of die cast weight more so than a lot of models on the market so as some of you mentioned before these were made to haul quite long rakes in real life and this model will have absolutely no issue performing with rakes of 9 10 or even more coaches as well you've got the five pole motor in there with the flywheel to ensure that you've got pickups on all wheels you can get round second radius curves, NEM couplings, a huge amount of details that you can see there as well. It really is a good all-rounder, this model, especially at coming in under £100 as well. Great for you modelers of the Eastern Region or the LNER as well, especially if you've got a nice little station terminus. This would be an absolutely fantastic model to add to your collection. So thanks a lot for joining us today. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope you've enjoyed taking a closer look at the N7 as well. You can get more information if you click the link in the description. We've got some really high quality images there of the models. These three are available to order now with more liveries and DCC sound variants coming in the future. So check out more information. Hope you've enjoyed the stream and more got some history on the N7 as well. Hope you've enjoyed learning something, whether it's about the model or whether about the history of these iconic locomotives. Otherwise, all it remains me to say is make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like the Facebook page as well. And check out that link in the description for more information. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Take care.